to our top 20 countdown for 2020. Trisha and I are so excited to share our projects with you that we have done this year. But don't worry, we're not going to keep you in suspense. We're going to actually start out with number one, and then we're going to count in reverse from 20 to one. We're starting out with the ladder that I made earlier this year, but make sure you stick around because we're going to bring it right back around at the end and show you the different ways that we decorated it through the seasons. Let's jump in. Hey y'all, it's Trish. I've been seeing these cute little ladders on Etsy that you could decorate for the different seasons and I really wanted one, but I didn't want to pay the price that they were asking. So I went over to Home Depot and I got a piece of one by two by eight inch lumber and a piece of one by three by eight inch lumber. And I'm going to cut this down to make my own. Now these ladders sit wonky. That's part of them being whimsical. So you want one side to be longer than the other. So I mark my board at 49 inches and I'm going to cut it with my chop saw. Now if you don't have a saw, Home Depot will make these cuts for you. Just take the measurements to them. So I cut my board and now I'm going to take my 47 inch piece and I'm going to turn my saw so that I have a 15 degree angle and chop off the end. This is going to make it sit crooked. Now I'm going to take my 1 by 2 and I cut 3 pieces at 18 inches and I also cut them on an angle so that they will look whimsical as well. Now that I have all my pieces of wood cut, I'm going to use a sanding block and sand down the edges so that they're not so rough. Now it's time to stain. I'm going to be using Minwax Jacobian Stain to stain my pieces. I wanted it to be dark because all the furniture in my home is dark and I wanted it to kind of match that. You could use any color stain or paint that you wanted. Now I'm going to put this in the shed and let it completely dry overnight. Okay, so now our pieces are dry so I laid them out to make our ladder. I'm going to be using some Gorilla Adhesive Glue and some wood screws to put my ladder together because I want it to be really sturdy so when I move it around it doesn't fall apart. I take one of my 18 inch pieces of wood and use it to lay my ladder out because I want it to be even but you've also got to have that angle. Once I get my pieces in place I take my 18 inch piece slats and I lay them out at an angle as well. Now I'm going to use my drill and drill some pilot holes into each end of my slat so that it will help my wood screws go in easier. Then we'll use our Gorilla Adhesive Glue and put that under it and then drill our screws into our slats. Now our ladder is put together. You can see the screws, but that doesn't bother me. I like how rustic it makes it look, but you could totally cover that with some putty and stain if you didn't like it. Now let's make some decorations for our ladder. I wanted to make a rocket and I'm also going to use one of these little signs from the Dollar Tree. I like the middle one so I took them apart and I'll make a hanger for that. We're also going to use some of these glittered stars that I got from Hobby Lobby. Now for our rocket, I googled a rocket silhouette and I printed that out on my computer and I'm just going to cut that out, trace it onto my foam board and then cut that out with my Zacto knife. And now we have our rocket. Now I want to use this scrapbook paper to cover it so I cut my rocket pieces apart and then I trace those onto my scrapbook paper and cut that out as well. Now we'll just use some Mod Podge to attach onto our rocket. I wanted to give it a little bit of bling, so I put a good layer of Mod Podge on top and sprinkled it with glitter, and now we have a blingy rocket. To make the back of it, I'm going to use one of these pom-poms I got from Hobby Lobby. I just trimmed it off and then used some hot glue to adhere it to the back of my rocket. To make a hanger, I'm going to use a little piece of twine. I cut it off, and then I just flood both ends with hot glue, and this gives us a hanger. I'm also going to make a hanger for our little sign using the same method. Just take a piece of twine and flood the ends. For our stars, I'm going to be using them at the top of the ladder. And I'll do that with some Velcro so that I can take them off and use other pieces. For the blue one, I'll just put a piece of Velcro on the back. And then I'm going to glue my silver star on top of my red star and put a piece of Velcro on the back of it as well. 
Now I want to use this little USA sign, but I didn't want it to hang like this. I want to make it going across. So I take it apart and then I cut the string from my Uncle Sam hat and I lay this out horizontally. I did want to have it a little crooked to give it a little bit of character and I glued all those pieces together. Now that it's glued together, I'm going to use my twine, cut a piece and flood the ends to make the hanger for it as well. I'll also be using this star garland that I got from Dollar Tree to decorate my ladder with. Now we're going to put it all together. You can see that I used my Velcro to attach my stars to the top and then I just use my garland and wrap it around my ladder. I took some little tacks and nailed them into the slats and that gave me something to hang my signs on. And there's our finished piece. I made this for less than $8 for the ladder and the decorations. It truly is my favorite piece I've ever made and that's why it's in the number one spot on our countdown. If you will stick around to the end of the video, we're going to show you how we made the decorations to change this out for the different seasons. Today we are excited to be participating in the Best 20 DIYs in 2020 collaboration hosted by Heidi over at Heidi Sambal DIY and co-hosted by Leah Nepp at DIY Beauty On Purpose. We will have a link to Heidi and Leah Nepp's channels as well as to the playlist in the description box below. When you finish our video, go over and check out all the other amazing creators and their best 20 DIYs of 2020. If you are new and coming over from the playlist, welcome! We are so happy to have you join us. We release three videos each week. We're sure you can find something you will like with Crafting Cousins. Now, let's craft y'all. Number 20 is an Easter sign that I made this year. Hey y'all, this is Kay. This is an Easter sign that I made this year. I went on my computer and I cut out some letters that spelled out Easter. For the A, I'm going to use this bunny silhouette that I found online. Then I'm going to tape down my letters to some foam board using a little washi tape and then I cut them out carefully with a Zacto knife. And now I cut them out again on some beautiful scrapbook paper and I'm going to use Mod Podge to attach it to all of the foam board letters. This project was quite some time ago but it's still one of my favorites. I just love Easter. So you should apply the Mod Podge and let your letters completely dry before you put a coat on the outside as well. Here are some ribbons that I'm going to be using to make a bow. I love all of these pastel colors. I'm going to use all five. There's just a bit of the last one, so I will piece it in. I'm going to make an eight inch bow. I'm going to use a six inch tail and four inch loops. If you've been watching my videos lately, you know that I've gotten a lot faster with my bows and a lot more confident. This particular bow is going to be one tail up, and one loop down and then on the opposite side it will be opposite. One tail up and the loop down. And there I have it in place and I'm going to go in with the second color, this green check gingham. And then this yellow and white stripe doing the same thing guys. One loop up and one tail down, four inch loops and six inch tails. And now for that last ribbon, I told you I was going to piece it in. So I took one piece and I'm going to make it the tail by just folding it in. And then the second piece, I'll just make two loops. I could not get any more, so I just used what I had. And now I'm taking a chenille stem and I'm going to 
wrap it right around that bow and pull it tight. You could also use a zip tie. And now I'm going to fluff it. You know that every good bow needs a lot of fluffing and I need to pull my tails and bow and loops in the direction they need to go. This is the board I'm going to use to make my sign. It is a piece of OSB that was left from my she shed. I painted it white, but it's still going to be very textured because that's the board, that's the kind of material it is. I put a nail in the top, that's where I will attach the bow. And then I begin placing all my letters and checking my spacing. I'm going to use E6000 and some hot glue to attach them to the sign. I'm just going to space them, pleasing to the eye, and as perfect as I can get it. I dressed up the bunny. I decided he needed some roses right there on top. And now we'll attach him as well. And there it is in my garage because I used to work out of my garage. And now it's there by my fireplace. I still love this sign so much. Just to let you know a little bit about Trish and I, we really are first cousins and we have a passion for crafting. We love to share our videos with you on YouTube and we also like to meet people and share our crafts at craft shows. At number 19, we have a heart palette, which is one of my very first projects. Hey y'all, it's Trish. This was one of the first projects that I ever did on our YouTube channel. I bought this cute little palette from Goodwill Outlet, but it had some broken little clips on it. So I took one of my tools and I popped all of those little clips off. I'm going to paint this palette and put this heart on there using this rope. And then I'm going to use some of these paper flowers that I got from Hobby Lobby and decorate it. Now, if you can't find one of these little palettes at your thrift store, I have found them at Hobby Lobby and they aren't that expensive. So the first thing I did was take some white chalk paint by Art Minds and I painted my piece. But I did this really lightly. I wanted it to look old and chippy so I didn't give it a full coat. I would just kind of dip my brush in there and then just swish it along and let it be thicker in some areas and thinner in others. Once that was dry, I took this heart, this open heart pattern that I printed off of the computer and I used some carbon paper to trace it onto my palette. You can kind of see the lines, so I took my pencil and just outlined those so I could see them better. And now I'm going to take my rope and I run it along that outline to see how long a piece I need. I use a little bit of hot glue on the end of it to seal it and then I just run my hot glue along my pattern and I stick my rope down into it. Now we're going to do the other side. Same thing, figure out how long I need my rope to be, trim it off, seal the ends with some hot glue, and then I put my hot glue down on my palette, and I put my rope down on it. And simple as that, we have our heart. Now I'm going to take these little paper flowers, I get them from Hobby Lobby, and I just kind of lay them out to see how I want them to look, and then I use a little bit of hot glue to adhere them to the corner of my heart. You could use any kind of flowers you wanted to here and put them any way you like. And there's our finished piece. I really love how this one turned out. It's very rustic looking. It's one of the simplest projects I've ever done. I actually still have this one hanging in my home and that's why it ended up on our top 20 list. Number 18 is the stacked wood presents that I made for Christmas this year. y'all it's Kay. For this project I'm going to use six pieces of board. The first one is 10 and a half by 12 and a half and two and a half by 14 and a half. That will be present one. The second one is 10 by 12 and three and a half by 12. The third set of boards are eight by eight and one and three quarters by nine. They are the same width. I'll need some paint I have some chalk paint in fern, crimson, and white. 
I'm also going to be using this chalky finish paint by Krylon as a good base coat because my pieces are pretty large. I need some ribbon. I got these from Hobby Lobby for 50% off in the Christmas section. I'm using wood glue and hot wood glue sticks, some ovals that I cut on my Cameo Silhouette, and some painter's tape, some chenille stems, some Cricut tools, this Merry Christmas sticker that I cut on my Cameo Silhouette, a hammer and some small nails, and a pencil as well, this floral pick, and these paint sticks left over from another project, and then several tools from my stash. Let's get started. All of my pieces have now been painted with the Krylon Chunk Paint to give them a nice base. Now I'm working on the lids for all of my presents. The first one, I'm going to paint red. The second one, I will paint in the green color. And the last one, I'm going to leave the white chalky paint. And there is all three of our lids for our gift boxes. Box number one is the largest present. I'm going to begin applying these circle stickers that I have in a random pattern across the box. They are really the letter O, so it's in two pieces. I'm going to keep that center piece for right now, and I'm going to place them onto my board. I actually used the Dollar Tree clear contact paper to lift up my stickers and place them down. And I just randomly keep applying them till I get a pattern I want. And after I do that, I'm going to remove all of the contact paper from the top. I'll burnish it down before that. And I'll also burnish it again once I remove the contact paper. This is just kind of a cheater method honestly, for painting circles on a project. Now I'm taking that green chalk paint and I'm going to begin applying it all over my board. I'm gonna paint the edges and of course the front of my present. And once I do that, I'm going to remove just the center of those letter O's. I made them more of an oval that didn't keep them exactly round. I just wanted kind of a whimsical effect. And then I'm going in with the red chalk paint and I'm going to paint carefully just the center of the O's. There is some margin for error. You'll see that when I remove the outer part. So you don't have to be too exactly careful, but you just want to cover it well. All of my chalk painting today, by the way, took two coats. And now I'm going to remove the outer part of the S. And that will leave a white circle. So I have a double circle. I've got my red and my white in there. And now I'm going to apply the top piece of my present. I'm going to use some wood glue and some hot wood glue. And then I'm going to reinforce it on the back by putting one of those paint stirrers. I glued that as well. And I also secure it with some really small nails. And now for box number two. I'm going to first begin by applying my box top to my box bottom. I'll just put on some wood glue and some hot wood glue to hold it fast. Center it up as best I can, and then I'm coming back in with some nails to secure it well. And now I'm going to apply my vinyl words, Merry Christmas. I just center them as best I can and peel off the backing once I've burnished everything down. And then I'll use a couple of leaves from that floral pig, and I'm going to glue them right to the upper right corner of my box. Put down a couple of leaves, and then I'll just put a few berries in the middle. And now we begin package number three by measuring in at one inch from all of the edges. And that helps me apply my first tape, which is my three quarter inch painter's tape. And then I measure in four and a half inches from the side. And that's how I'm going to apply a thinner stripe 
that I made from just some leftover vinyl. It's about half an inch wide. And I'm going to apply it four and a half inches in from both of those sides. And then finally at one inch, I'll finish off with my three quarter inch painter's tape. And now I'm taking my red chalk paint and painting all of the edges, and then I'll paint in between all of my pieces of tape. I don't just go and swipe, I gently go from each side of the piece of tape, so I have as little bleedage as possible. There will still be a little of touch up along the way, but actually not a whole lot. This is going to give us kind of a candy cane striped look. Not a perfect candy cane, Here's the best part, taking off the tape. I love this part, and you can see I do have some touch up I'm going to fix. And now we'll apply the top to our box. I'm just going to lay it on the back of the board, trace around it with a pencil, use some wood glue, and of course that hot wood glue and then I'll just press it in and that's our third package I love how it looks every Christmas present needs a bow so I'm using my easy bow maker and I'm going to make five inch loops with this green one and a half inch ribbon and I will do two loops on each side you just twist it as you put it into the wooden pegs and that's how you keep the ribbon the right side up. And then I come in with my red. And I make my loops just a tiny bit smaller. And again, putting two on each side. This ribbon is also one and a half inch. Now I'm taking my two and a half inch ribbon, and I know this is backwards because normally you put the smaller ribbons on the top. But you know what? I wanted the bottom ribbons just to give some color and the top ribbon, it's my showpiece. And then I'm going to use a zip tie and tighten it in the back, placing a chenille stem inside first. Tighten it up and cut it with my wire cutters. And then I'm just gonna fluff. Every bow needs a lot of fluffing dovetail my ends and there it is a pretty bow i want to show you guys how i joined this as you can see this is all scrap lumber i literally took it out of my husband's scrap piles this is one i had painted on later i'm going to come back and i'm going to make this look real pretty by giving it a good coat of white paint but i want you to see how it's joined these are those scrap five gallon paint sticks that I used and I nailed and glued them into both pieces. As you know, I joined the top to the bottom here with this small paint stick. These are a lot thicker, so I put a broken piece of a small one in between there and that gave me the thickness I needed to compensate for this board. And so I nailed these in and glued them down and that's a good support for my gifts. And I'm going to do the top one the same way. I'm going to glue a craft stick to the back of my present at an angle, and that's how I will attach my bow. The bow was sitting down too low on the package, so I had to compensate for that, because I do love a big bow, y'all. And there it is. I can all wait to decorate for Christmas. At number 17, we have the hurricane lamp that I made early spring. Hey, y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're gonna take some items we got from the Dollar Tree and make a faux hurricane lamp. I'm gonna use a small hummingbird feeder, this candle holder, a hurricane type vase, and then some lace I got from Walmart. We're also gonna use a small dowel and a tack. 
I'll take the tack and stick it right into the end of our small dowel and then we're going to cut a piece off to use as the piece that you turn to get your wick up. Now we're going to take our hummingbird feeder apart. We don't need that clear part or the little flowers and we don't need this hanger on the top. So I'm going to take my wire cutters and clip that off and get it as smooth as we can because it needs to be able to lay flat on the bottom piece. Now we're going to take that, our lace, our candle holder, and our dowel out and we're going to give it all a good coat of this hammered silver paint from Krylon. Now everything is painted and dried. I really love how this looks. We're going to put it together. We're going to take our lace and attach it to the bottom of our vase using some of our Mod Podge. And then I'll also use my hot glue to seal that in so it'll stay in place until it dries. Now I'm going to take the bottom part of my hummingbird feeder and I'm going to use some E6000 and some hot glue and I'm going to attach this top piece or what was the lid onto the bottom piece. I put down some E6000, use a little bit of hot glue and then just attach it to the top. Now we're going to take that piece and attach it to our candle holder using the same technique. A little bit of E6000, a little bit of hot glue and there you go. I'm going to take that little piece of dowel that we cut and glue it onto the side of this with a little dab of hot glue. Now I'm going to put some hot glue on the bottom of my vase and stick it right in the top and you have a hurricane lamp. We'll take a little tea light and stick into our vase. Make sure you don't use anything with a live flame. And there's our hurricane vase. I really love how this piece turned out. It is so simple to make and it really does make a big impact. Everyone who's come over could not figure out how I made this thing. I actually love it. Number 16 is a fall fireplace swag that I made. For this project, I'm going to be using this leftover piece of green pine garland that came from Hobby Lobby. I cut a piece of it off this summer to do a Christmas in July project. Well, the length of it is the perfect length for my mantle on my fireplace. So I'm going to use it for a fall mantle piece. It will not even look like Christmas at all when we're finished. So this is the first step of the process. I just spread it across and it fit perfectly on my mantle. So let's dress it up and make it fall. And here are some of the ribbons I have chosen to work with today. I'm pulling out all of the things in orange and green and a little bit of burgundy in this one that will go perfectly with my flowers. I have two different kinds of mesh here. This is my favorite. It's more of a burnt orange, even though it may not look that way on camera. This I got on sale at Michael's. And this is kind of a burnt orange, but brighter. Don't know if I'll need both of these, but I have these to work with. I have pulled out my leftover florals from all my projects. This is some sunflowers, of course. Got some leftover moms that you saw in the other project. These are some metal sunflowers that I haven't used so far that I bought and you saw in a haul. Hopefully we'll use those on there today. These are the leaves I have on hand. This one's in a bunch type thing. And this one's on a garland. So those are the leaves I have on hand because I'm using all my leftovers on this project. I have these tiny pumpkins, an orange glitter leaf, have this sign from the Dollar Tree. I say grateful, thankful, and blessed. First thing I'm going to do is take this mesh and I'm going to go ahead and pre-gather it to put it on the wreath. This is kind of a cheater method. If you are scared to death of mesh and putting it into your Christmas tree or your swags of all kinds, door swags, fireplace swag, this is a good cheater method for doing it. Take some chenille stems, you will need quite a few, and cut them in half. You don't need the whole thing. You could probably even get by with cutting them in thirds, but for time's sake, I'm just going to cut them in half. It helps if you're consistent in your measurements. You could just lay this on like a TV table, and usually those are the perfect width to do this. And so I'm going to gather it up here at the end and get a nice even poof as I can. 
put a chenille stem around it. I'm going to turn it towards the back of this because I'm also going to use these to attach it to the green ring, right? So we've got that. Don't worry about this. We'll tuck that in or trim that off later. And then I'm going to come in here about 17 inches and do the same thing again. You know what, since this is on my fireplace, I think I'll do 15. We'll do 15 inches and do the same thing. This is wonderful mesh. It feels almost like a fabric. I just love it so much. It should have good coverage. So pull it again at about 15. And do it again. And I'm just going to continue this process down this garland till I know I have more than I need, right? Because my piece of greenery is about seven feet long. So I'm going to make sure I have over that so I can gather it into my garland. So we'll speed this up. I have my garland as much as I can get it right now on camera. I wanted to show you that I went in and folded it in half and I just put a contrasting color of chenille stem so I know where the halfway mark is. And then I will work on one half at the time and we'll kind of mirror what we do. I also went in and figured out how many of these loops I have and I kind of did the same thing. I went into the center, found my center. I have an extra long chenille on it so I can tell and then we'll come in here and begin working on the first half. What I'm going to do, I'm going to reach down into this garland, kind of flatten it so I know where the back side is. And that's what I'll do, I'll just kind of flatten it as I go and keep it kind of squished up. But you can use all of this greenery, of course, to twist things into there too, if it works out that way. But we're going to be covering most of it up. And I'm going to just wrap it here in the center. I'm gonna leave that for now on there. Okay, so I twisted it into the middle, the middle of my garland to the middle of my pine garland. And then we're just going to start putting it in in poofs. You have to kind of decide, do you want it? You don't want it flat out this way. You want it to kind of poof a little bit. I think that's a pretty good size poof. And then where we land, then we're going to put it into our garland and twist it in. And I'm just kind of pulling it to the back. And right now it looks like, oh goodness Kay, there's too much of that greenery showing. Well, that's just right now. We still have a lot to put in this garland. We have bows, we have lots of things. So I'm going to go ahead and carry on and get this first part in. When I got to the end, I decided I would just sort of fold it around and encapsulate the greenery there and then come back and do a second strand. So it'll be double and that will give even more coverage. If you have 20 inch mesh, you wouldn't have to do this, but I kind of like the extra poofy and the changes that it makes in it. So I'm going to carry on and get back to the middle. Now we'll do the same thing on this end. This is a bow that I pulled from my stash that I had already tied on my easy bow. I just used five of the ribbons that I showed you. That's going to be the centerpiece on the swag. 
I will have to move out to the fireplace in just a moment and show you how I put all of the items into the sweat. I wanted to show you the sunflowers that I had. I took the stems off the back and they have this nice little loop here and I'll just use a chenille stem, twist it in the back and put it into the swag. But these are really cute. I think I'm only going to use two of them. They came from the Dollar Tree. For this item as well, I probably will only be able to use two of them. And I'm going to actually come in and I pulled this up just a little bit here and I'll make sure it's reattached well. And clip it that way, clip it down the center here. And I'm actually going to use the ribbon on the back and that's how I'm going to tie it into my swag. I'll just put an extra drop of glue to reinforce it. I have these leftover ribbons from another project that I had done and I didn't like the way the bow came out so I cut them apart. I thought we would take them and stack them in some kind of order and then refold them. Now, each of these pieces is 18 inches. What I want to do is come in here and kind of fold it back and do one loop and one tail. Just like so. so. I'm going to leave just a little bit on the back so I can grab that later. Let's see what kind of bow we can make. And we want to swap ends and do the next one. Like so. And then we'll do this one on the back. And here, grab it. Put it on that side. And then let's grab this one. Place it on the opposite side. It'll help if I placed it on the back with it. So I'll place it on the opposite. And then grab this guy. in as well. Right there. And make a loop. Put that into the bow. And I know it looks really messy right now. That's par for the course. Let's grab a zip tie. And place it around. Pull it through. And cinch that bow up tight. And let's see if we can fluff this up. And this way we get to use all of our leftover ribbon. I think it's gonna fluff out nicely. It's going to take some time. I won't do it all on camera with you. But we'll just fluff that out and we'll have some tails on one side and bows on the other. And we get to use up all of our leftover ribbon. And you just keep working with it because it's wired ribbon and it will eventually come into the shape that you want it to. You just kind of command it. And you also get to use up all your leftover ribbon. So we'll make another one of these and these will go in our swag as well. my completed fall mantle with all of my projects that I'm doing this year. At number 15, we have a Kirkland inspired crate. Hey y'all, it's Trish. 
For this project, I wanted to use this picture I found on the Kirkland's website as inspiration to make a 3D piece for my table. We're going to use three of these salsa jars that I collected, and we're going to use some paint stirrer sticks. We'll use eight five gallon sticks, four cut at 11 and a half inches, and four cut at four and a quarter inches. And we'll use three one gallon paint sticks cut at 11 inches. We're also going to use a three quarter inch square dowel or tomato steak and cut four pieces of it at three and three quarters inch. Now that our wood is cut, we're going to take our apple barrel acrylic paint in the color coffee bean. I mix a little bit of water in that to thin it out, and then I just paint it onto my wood and use a paper towel to wipe it off. This gives it a really pretty stained effect, and you don't have the stinkiness of using oil stain. Now I'm going to take my jars and give them a really good coat of paint with my Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory. It took one and a half coats, which just means one good coat and some touch up. Now that our jars are dry, I wanted to distress them, and my favorite way of doing that is to use an old eyeshadow palette. I take a stiff brush and I rub the eyeshadow all over the jar, and it gives it this really pretty distressed effect. Now to finish up our jars, I'm going to take some twine, wrap it around the top several times, and then just tie it in a bow. To put our crate together, we're going to use some Gorilla Wood Glue and some hot glue. The wood glue is for the stronghold and the hot glue is for the fast hold. And we're going to lay our sticks out. Now they do have these markings on them, so I want to make sure I turn them so that you can't see them. Once I lay out my three one gallon paint stirrers for the bottom, I use my four square pieces and I glue one in each corner. Now that those are glued, we're going to take our four short pieces and glue two on each end of our crate. And then we'll use our four long pieces and glue those onto the sides. And there's our crate. Now we'll put our jars in and add some florals and it will be finished. And there's our crate. I love how this piece turned out. My husband really likes it too. So it's found a permanent home on our dining room table. We love hearing from y'all. It really just makes our day. Make sure you write down in the comments and let us know which project is your favorite. And if you have any suggestions, please leave those there as well. We love seeing all the ideas you guys have. Number 14 is a prayer journal that I made and there will be a link in the description box below to the original video. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Today I'm going to be looking back at a journal I made using some paper from Echo Park, my art glitter glue, some double-sided tape, a notebook from the Dollar Tree, some white paper, and my hole punch. I'm going to use a paper cutter and a scoreboard as well. Now I'm looking through the pages to see which ones I like the best and want to use for all of my elements into my prayer journal. Echo Park has some lovely paper. It is double-sided, very thick, and nice to use. Now let's cut our cover. We're going to cut it at 12 inches, which is the width of our paper, and then seven and a quarter inches tall. I'm cutting mine twice because I wanted to get all of that bottom line of color. And now I'm going to score my cover at five and an eighth, five and three eighths, five and five eighths, ten and three quarters, and eleven and a quarter. I'm going to fold on those lines and burnish them down as well. And now let's make a pocket for the inside cover. I'm cutting it just a little less than the width of the inside front cover at about four inches tall. I'm going to measure in one inch from the side and one inch from the top and cut it on the diagonal and that will be an easy to use pocket. I'm going to attach it with my art glitter glue. Art glitter glue is an amazing medium for paper crafting. And now let's cut a pocket for our, our journal. For our pocket folder, we're going to cut it at 10 and a half for 10 and a half for our width and 10 inches for our height. 
We're going to score it at one fourth, five and a quarter, and 10 and a quarter. And then we're going to turn it and score it at seven inches. That three inches from the bottom is going to give us our pocket part. I'm going to first fold and burnish all of my vertical lines and then my horizontal line. I'll cut a V at the bottom, fold in the sides, and you got a pocket. And I'll just glue everything down again with the art glitter glue. Art glitter glue dries really fast. And now I'm using my Crop-A-Doll corner chomper and I'm going to chomp all these corners and make them nice and rounded. And now we're going to start laminating first our pocket folder. We'll just place it in this eight and a half by 11. For our cover, well, it's just an inch too big. So we'll use two pieces and just piece it right there in the middle and that'll give us a nice thick spine. I'm going to cut off the excess using my paper trimmer. And we'll run through each item at least twice. And then we'll fold in those two sheets for the cover. And now I'm coming back with my Zacto knife and I'm going to carefully slit just the laminating film so that I can get something inside each pocket. And now we need to put our elastic in our notebook. So we're going to punch three holes at the end, each end, and one big hole right in the middle. And if you don't have a big crop -a doll punch like I do, you can always use that Cricut tool I was showing you. And I'm using my big crop -a doll right there in the center and I'm going to punch a hole. I'm using this elastic that I got. And I'm going to burn the ends and start running it through my notebook. You want to start on that middle hole and leave about a half length on the inside cover as you string it. And you're going to run all of the elastic on the outside horizontally across. And you're going to run it on the inside vertically up and down. And you have to go in and out of some holes more than once. And when you get to the end, you'll tie it all together. And we have six elastics inside. And now we're making a little piece to go around the side and keep it closed when we want it to be closed. So we're taking our elastic and we're going to tie a knot on the end and push it through that hole. And then we can wrap it around our book and close our journal. I'm going to attach this little charm I made right there to the front just to decorate our elastic. I'm taking that Dollar Tree notebook, which is six and seven inches high and 10 inches wide, and I'm going to cut a cover for it. And we'll use some of our stickers or our cut aparts to decorate it. And once I get that cut, I'm just going to carefully fold it gently around my book. And we'll use some art glitter glue to attach it. Of course, we want to use our corner chomper and round all of the corners. And I'll use my bone folder to make sure it stays nice and neat on that cover. And here I'm using some of my cut aparts with some double-sided tape and the art glitter glue. And I'm just going to mount it on some pink paper so it looks complimentary. And I add some stickers. And that's our little journal from the Dollar Tree. 
So let's put in our pocket folder. And now we'll put in our notebook by opening it up to the middle of the book. And now I'm putting a clear pocket on the back. I'm going to add just a little colorful clothespin, a paper clip that I decorated, nice little elements to decorate our prayer journal. And now let's make another notebook to go in our prayer journal as well. I'm going to cut this page the same measurements as the booklet that we made. And then I ran some pages off of my computer that said pray and a scripture, pray without ceasing. And I'm just going to make my own notebook. I use my long arm stapler and just staple it right there in the center. And then add my cover. We have a charm on the spine as well, something that I just made up. And then I'm showing you the inside of my book. I have some extra cut aparts in the back, our paper clip, and it's done. I love this prayer journal so much. At number 15, we have our Christmas train, but you can change up the colors and how you decorate it and use it all year round. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use four of the small crates from the Dollar Tree, an insert to the little box they sell, some tumbling tower blocks, some super glue wood glue, some craft sticks, both regular and mini, some googly eyes, I use the large, some chalk paint, a printable that I made on the computer, some words I printed out from the computer, some peppermint ornaments I got from Hobby Lobby, a little bottle I had left over from my HelloFresh kit, some floral foam, some present ornaments, some white pom-poms, some iridescent glitter, some rocks from the yard, some black felt, a microfiber cloth from the Dollar Tree, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and several tools from my work caddy. Whew. The first thing we're gonna do is start painting. We have a lot of things to paint. I'll be painting all four of the little crates with the red lacquer chalk paint from Waverly. I paint them inside and outside because you are gonna see all of it. And I also paint the little insert from the box that you get from the Dollar Tree. This is the one that has the piece that pulls out like a drawer. Now we're gonna take our craft sticks and paint them with our white Waverly chalk paint. I do the large ones and the mini ones. Then we'll take our ink chalk paint from Waverly and we're gonna paint the edges of our tumbling tower blocks. That's all that'll show once you put them together. And we're also gonna paint our little bottle that came from the HelloFresh kit. I think this one had balsamic vinegar in it. We will also paint our rocks from the yard. These are gonna be coal. While our paint dries, we're gonna cut out our printable. I did make this on my computer, so if you would like to have a copy of it, just send me an email to the address below in the description box, and I'll be happy to send it over to you. Once I get it cut out, I use my Mod Podge and I apply it to my box. I want Santa to be on the front of the box. I'll put the deer on one side and my little elf on the other. We're gonna leave the back blank. You just use a little Mod Podge on the box, press it down, and then put just a little bit of Mod Podge across the top and this seals it in. While that dries, we're gonna take apart these little peppermint ornaments. I cut the string off and release them. And now I want to take that shank off the top. These are going to be the wheels of our train and I want them to be round. So I just use my wire cutters and I clip those little shanks off and then I trim off the little excess that's left over. Now I want to frame out the little windows on my train. 
So I take my mini craft sticks and I mark them and cut them down with my scissors. I lay them out to see where they need to be so that they will line up and make a frame. I also use a piece of sandpaper to sand down those edges because it's a little hard to get those edges perfectly straight. My top and bottom piece ends up being two inches long. I'll do this on all three sides and then those side pieces end up being one and a quarter inch long. I'll show me putting together one, but I won't make you sit through all three of them. I think if I show one, you'll get the idea. I touched up the ends of the sticks where I had to cut them off, and then I just used my super glue wood glue and a little bit of hot glue, and I frame out my window. Now that that's ready, we're going to attach this to the top of one of our crates. This is going to be the engine of our train. I use some of my super glue wood glue and my hot glue, and then I just sit it into the middle of the crate all the way to the back. Now we're gonna take our little bottle and glue it into the center of the engine. This is going to be our smokestack. Now I want to put on my wheels. I take my ruler and I mark my crate at one quarter inches in, and then I put hot glue on half of my ornament and I stick it onto my crate right there at that mark. I keep looking, that's why I keep picking it up out of the camera is because I keep turning it to look. I'm using that round dot in the center to make sure that I get my wheels even. Now I'm going to show you one of the cars. I won't show you all three of them because they're all exactly the same. The cars obviously are going to be turned upright because we want to be able to put something in those. I do the same thing. I put hot glue on half of the ornament and then I stick it down where I made the mark. Now I want to take my words and transfer them to my bigger craft sticks. I have two that's going to say Santa Express and one that says Believe. I'm using the same method I always use by using the carbon paper to transfer the words and then using my black marker to fill them in. Then I just cut down my sticks and I glue them on to my train. I put the Santa Express on either side and then I put the Believe sign on the front. Now we're going to take our googly eyes and make the lights for the train. I use my X-Acto knife and make a slit in one side of it and take off the little black part in the center. And then I just use my hot glue and glue them onto the front. I thought these needed to be big so Santa could see where he was going. Now we're going to use our tumbling tower blocks to join our train together. I'm only going to show you a couple of the pieces so you don't have to sit through it repeatedly. I use my wood glue and my hot glue and glue two pieces together and then I use the same wood glue and hot glue and I glue it onto the bottom of one cart and then push the other cart up against it. You see I've already done those two and then I just put them together. I decided I wanted to use some of my white chalk paint and just give my train a light dusting of snow right there on those edges where it would settle. Then we're going to take some of our floral foam and put into our cars of our train. I cut it down, then I took my black felt and measured out how much I would need to go into the back cart, cut it down, and put it inside. Now I'm going to use that fiber cloth and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut down a piece for the center cart and cut down a piece for the front cart. This is just covering our floral foam. Now I'm going to put my coal into my cart, but I noticed that it was too far down into it and I didn't want to get more rocks because that makes it too heavy. I cut down some more floral foam which raised it up and now my coal fits in there perfectly. We'll put some pom-poms in the center one because Santa's taking some snowballs to some kids. And then we're going to put our presents into the first one. Now I'm going to take a little bit of that glitter and sprinkle over the top just to give it a little bit of glistening from the snow. And there's our train. 
I am so happy with how this one turned out. I think the grandkids are going to love this when they come for the holidays. Number 12 is a lantern that I made using some tumbling blocks from the Dollar Tree. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Today I'm going to be making a lantern using some tumbling blocks that I got from the Dollar Tree, this frame from the Dollar Tree, as well as some scrap wood. The larger of my two pieces of scrap wood is the same dimensions as this frame. The frame is going to serve as the bottom of my lantern and the scrap wood will be the top. The second piece of scrap wood is going to go right in the center of that top piece just to dress it up a little bit. I determine the measurements by measuring in about an inch and a half all the way around from the sides of the larger frame. And there you can see they're the same size. I will be using wood glue to put my project together. I have my little square that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to use it to line up my tumbling blocks. Using that wood glue, I'm just going to place it down in my square there and hold it till it starts to glue well. I will need four sets of four, four sets of two, and two sets of three. Now I'm starting to deconstruct my frame and take out the back and then I'll just turn it over. I'll take out that additional piece from the top and you can remove all of that blue on the bottom as well if you want. I'm sorry I got off screen here. And now I'm going to go in and glue four of the sets of four to each side of my little frame. This is going to be the sides of the lantern. And there we have all four. And then I'll take two sets of the two and they will fit exactly between that front and back set of our sides there, of the tumbling blocks. And then for the right and left side, I will have to do a custom cut on one of the sets of three that I made. And there it is together. And now I'm going to go in with some white chalk paint and begin painting all of my elements. But first, let's put some sides on. I'm using these skewers for roasting marshmallows. And I'm just going to custom cut them to fit on my sides. I'm going to make an X on two sides. And then on the opposite two sides, I will just put one dowel across. This will strengthen our frame, but it also dresses it up quite a bit as well. And there it is, put together and a candle in. You can see where I drew my line on the inside of my top piece, and I'm using those tumbling blocks that I glued together to make a little lip on the inside and that will keep it from sliding off the top of my lantern. And now finally I'm going in and paint everything in the white Waverly chalk paint. And then I'll paint that top as well. I have attached my additional piece on there. And there it is all together. This was one of my favorite projects. And then I put a bow on top because this was for the 4th of July. At number 11, we have a small bench that I made that you can change out the decorations for the season. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm gonna use some of these one gallon paint stirrer sticks and make a cute little bench that I can put into my foyer and change out the decorations for the different seasons. We are going to use eight of these one gallon paint stirrer sticks. They come 10 to a pack for 97 cent. And we're going to cut six of them down to nine inches. Now keep that three inch piece that you cut off the end because we're gonna use those for the legs. Then we're gonna take two more of them and we're going to make a four and a half inch cut and a four inch cut. You'll do that on each one and that's gonna give you two of each pieces. 
Now to put it together, we're gonna take our two four and a half inch pieces and lay them out. And I did use my ruler just so I could get my spacing. Since my stick is nine inches long, I wanted a one inch overhang on each side. So I put it at the one and the eight inch mark. And then I laid my other, I laid, and then I laid three of my paint stirrer sticks down on it. And I'm going to use some wood glue and hot glue to attach these to my support pieces. I did find the easiest way to do this was to flip it over, mark where it needed to be, and then glue it on. That worked so much easier. Now make sure you leave a piece at the bottom so that you can do the, the, so that you can attach your seat. And now we're going to take one of our paint stirrer sticks and we're going to kind of stand it up and glue it down with our hot glue and our wood glue. And then I use an extra bead of glue just to give it security. Now we're going to take our two four inch pieces and glue those onto the back of that. And this is how it looks so far. Now we're going to take our last two nine inch paint stirrer sticks and glue those down as well. And there's your little bench. Now take four of those three inch pieces that you cut off and I did sand the top of them to make sure they were all even and then we're just going to glue them onto the bottom for legs. Now I did notice that I glued them onto what I had set aside as the back but it worked out just fine. Now we want to paint our bench and I didn't have any white chalk paint because this was the beginning of the pandemic so I used acrylic paint and talc and equal amounts and made some chalk paint and painted my bench. And there you go. I think this turned out so cute and I've had so much fun decorating it. For this time though, we were decorating it for the 4th of July. So I took some wood beads. I'm using 15 of those and I'm going to make a bead garland. I'll be using some true blue and some real red and some talc to make some more chalk paint and that's what I'm going to be using. I strung my beads up and I painted five red, five white, and five blue. I also want to make a little charm, so I cut out a USA in a chunky font and I traced it onto my foam board and cut it out and now let's go paint everything. There we go, all of it is painted and we're ready to put it together. I'm gonna take some twine and put a piece of tape around the end of it and then I just strung my beads onto it, red, white, blue, red, white, blue, until I had it as long as I wanted it. Now we're gonna trim that up and lay it to the side and we're going to start making our charm. I took my letters and stacked them on top of each other and then I just used a little bit of hot glue to attach them, but you do want to be careful not to melt your foam board. And I did put my little letters crooked. I wanted to do that on purpose to give it a whimsical touch. To attach this little charm to my bead garland, I just took my twine, tied it in a knot, and then I took a little bit of hot glue and glued the little foam charm onto the end of that. Now I want to make a tassel, and this was the first tassel I had made. <laughs> So I didn't quite do it right, but it worked. You just take some twine, wrap it around your finger several times, and then you slip off the knots. And I should have took my garland and ran that piece of twine through there, but I cut it off for some reason. And then I took another piece of twine, wrapped it around the top, and then tied it off and trimmed it. And then you just cut open your loops, and there's your little tassel. Now again, I should have already had the string from the garland ran through there to tie on but since I didn't I had to take the long way around this and I tied it to it and then I took the string from the garland and wrapped it back around my knot and tied it off again and it worked it just wasn't the easiest way to do this again this was at the beginning of our channel and I was really happy with my garland now I want to make a little pennant so I googled red, white, and blue pennant and I found this and I printed it off on some cardstock and now we're just going to cut some of them out. Once I got my pieces cut out, I took my Zacto knife and I started two little holes in the top and then I just used a skewer to open them up. But be really careful because you don't want to tear your cardstock or crush it too badly. Now that I got my holes, I just take my twine and feed it through and I add them striped star, striped star, until I got it the length I wanted it to drape across the back of my bench. And there's our little pennant. I think this is so cute. 
Now the last piece of my decorations, I'm going to use this mini watering can that I got from Hobby Lobby and some of these red, white, and blue flowers I got from Michaels and I'm just going to trim up some of them and stick them down in my can. And there's our little bench. This turned out to be one of my favorite pieces and I've loved decorating it for the different seasons. At number 10 is a book stack I recently made. You can change it out easily for the seasons by just changing out the bows and the belly bands. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Today our challenge from Leonette at DIY Beauty on Purpose is to use a thrift store item to recreate a Christmas gift. Well, I got these books at the thrift store and they were in poor shape. I know some people are adverse to changing books up and painting them, but I assure you these are not the All-American Great Novel. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to use this bandana that is made out of burlap that I got at Hobby Lobby. Some Waverly white chalk paint. Some black HTV vinyl. I got mine at Hobby Lobby and it was 50% off. And here are my words all cut out from the vinyl I used my Cameo Silhouette. I will be using three ribbons, but I have six here to choose from. I wanted you to see all of my choices. Some Velcro. This one is made especially for fabrics and it works really well. Some zip ties and a few alligator clips. And finally, some Mod Podge. The first thing I'm going to do is come in and start painting my books with my white Waverly chalk paint. You want to make sure you paint all of the edges, including inside the cover where the black extends to. Otherwise, it will show from the side. I'm using a tiny paintbrush and I'm getting into all my little nooks and crannies. And now I'm going in and painting the outside. It will take two good coats to cover the book completely. And now I have all three painted. I'm going in with my burlap and I'm going to cut it five inches plus the width of the spine. And that's how I determined how big I wanted my piece to be. And I used my rotary cutter and it cut quite easily. I just needed to trim a little. And now I'm cutting for the height of my book. My books were about eight and a quarter inches tall. And that's how I'm going to place it on my spine. I couldn't use the spines the way they were because they were in such bad shape. And there I have all three. Now I'm coming in with some Mod Podge and I'm going to place down my burlap around my spines. You will need to let this dry really well about four hours. And you want to be quite generous with your coating. For the areas that met the book and wouldn't be showing, I went ahead and put a coat of Mod Podge on the outside of them as well. And now I'm going to begin making a bow for our books. I start with about a six inch tail. I'm using my Easy Bow Maker and I'm going to make approximately three inch loops on each side. Twist the ribbon as you put it into your Easy Bow and that keeps right sides out. I'm going to place about four loops on each side. And then cut it at six inches. I'm using a zip tie to cinch it in the middle. I'll just pull it tight, fluff it a little bit, and we'll dovetail the other ribbon tail. And I'm going to cut a bit of this black ribbon and tie it right around the middle of my bow and that will cover my zip tie. And now I'm taking my alligator clip and I'm just working it right 
under my ribbon there. A little fluffy, and it's complete. And now let's make a second bow, and we'll do it the exact same way. I decided that instead of just one look on a book, how about three looks? So I'm making one with this striped black and natural, and I'm gonna tie ribbon around it as well, of course. Fluff it out, dovetail my ends, and now I'm moving on to the third bow. This will be our spring look. I just love a home decor piece that can be left out all year, but decorated just a little bit differently. Multi-purpose. And now I'm placing my vinyl where I want to iron it down. I'm coming in two centimeters from the edge of my book. I'm going to use this Teflon sheet that is heat protected and come in with my iron. Make sure you follow the directions on the package of your vinyl. And here I have all three of them ready to go. I'm going to use some hot glue to glue my book stacks together. Make sure you take some time and line it up exactly where you want it to go. And there we have it. First, I'm coming in with this buffalo check ribbon and I'm going to measure it around my book. I'm going to take a little hot glue and turn under those ends so we don't have any raw edges. Everything will look finished and nice. And the Velcro I'm using, it's what I call sticky back Velcro. You just peel off the edge and stick it down. And it really does work extremely well. And then I'll peel off the top part and pull over my ribbon so that I have it exactly where I want it to go. And then I just take my little bow that's on my alligator clip and clip it down. And there's our first look. And then our second look. And finally our third. My plan is that this will be my fall look. You could always add in some cotton bowls to dress it up even further. And this I thought would be my winter. Looks all cozy like a blanket. And finally, a spring-summer look. I can't wait to make more belly bands and bows for my books. At Crafting Cousins, you always find a variety of crafts on our channel. Trish specializes in wood and I specialize in paper, but we cover a variety of topics like home decor, farmhouse decor, shabby chic, Kay specializes in wreaths and making pretty bows. There's a myriad of projects you will find on Crafting Cousins. At number nine, we have a wood slice wreath that I made for one of my friends. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I am going to be using various tools from my work caddy, some foam board, some dried flowers that I picked up from the Dollar Tree, some sticks from my yard, some wood slices that I got from Hobby Lobby. These are about $4.99 a bag and I used my 40% off coupon for them. Some burlap ribbon, two plates that I'm going to trace for circles, my glue gun and some wood glue sticks. The first thing that I'm going to do is take the larger plate and trace it onto my foam board then I'm going to use my Zacto knife to cut it out. I did have this laying on a self-healing mat so that I didn't cut my table. Now I'm going to take that smaller plate and make sure that it's centered. Then I just trace around it and use my Zacto knife to cut it out too. I just want to get that thin ring. Once I have that cut out, I take my sanding sponge and go around those edges and just smooth them out. The Zacto knife leaves a little bit of jagged edges and this takes care of them really nicely. Now I'm going to take the larger pieces of the wood slices and lay those out around the ring and see how I want to position them. 
I didn't like how the black showed through the wood pieces, so I took my Beachcomber Beige acrylic paint and just painted the top and the sides. But I really still wasn't happy with how that looked, so I end up taking my truffle chalk paint and going back over those edges and then putting some of the streaks on the top so that it kind of has that wood look if you see it peeping between the wood slices. Now I'm just going to take my wood slices and lay them out until I get a pattern that I like. You don't get a lot of the large wood slices in this pack, so I fortunately had some left from when I did the Ray Dunn ornaments, and I was able to use those as well with this. Once I had my pattern in place, I used my super glue wood glue for the permanent hold, and I used my hot glue for the fast hold, and I just went around and glued everything in place. Again, I'm sorry that my camera keeps fuzzing out. It's trying to focus. I made sure the blinds were closed this time, but it still keeps adjusting with the sun outside and I'm not sure how to stop that. I hope that I'm able to get a new camera before too much longer. Once I got my bottom layer attached, now I'm gonna take some of the bigger pieces this left and just go around and make a top layer. Once I was happy with how that was laid out, I did the exact same thing. I used my super glue wood glue and my hot glue to put it in place. Y'all, I love having these natural looking elements in my home. I live out in the country and this is all outside, so I think it just fits perfectly. Do you like to use natural things in your home decor? Now I'm going to take my burlap ribbon and I figured out how big a piece I wanted. Then I just grab one of the center strings and pull it. When I did that, it ruffles it up and now I have a burlap ruffle. Then I just take my hot glue and glue it into place. Now I'm going to take the sticks that I had in the yard and the sticks that came in the dried flowers. Silly me, I didn't even notice that there was sticks in there. I wouldn't have bothered to go out and get any from the yard, but this just shows you that you can mix and match those and they look really good together. I also like those little curly flat pieces. I'm not sure what those are, but I really liked how they look. So I just kind of go through what was in those two packages, pick out pieces that I like and keep layering them down and gluing them on with my hot glue. My hot glue is a wood glue stick, so it really works well with these natural pieces since this is wood. Once I got that put together, I just thought that my wreath needed a little bit something extra, so I took one of these welcome words that I got in a pack from the Dollar Tree and decided to use it on there. I didn't want it to be that um, silver color though, so I took my plaster chalk paint and gave it a good coat of paint. I ended up using three coats to make sure that I had a really good coverage. Now that my word is dry, I just kind of play around with it until I get it in the place that I like it. Then I use a little bit of hot glue and glue it down. Be careful with this though, because that hot glue does heat up that metal. And there's my finished piece. I love how the natural elements bring the outside into your home. And I think it fits with my decor perfectly. At number eight, we have a chicken wire frame memo board that I made. Hey y'all, it's Kay. I'm going to be making something with this 11 by 14 picture frame that I got at the thrift store. It was half price day, so it cost 75 cents. You can't beat that for a solid wood frame. I'm going to use this chicken wire, some folk art chalk paint that I got at Hobby Lobby, and it was 30% off this week. My paintbrush, some ribbon from my stash. I chose this red and white gingham 
with all the farm animals on it because I thought it would be perfect. And I need a little yellow accent because I have a lot of yellow in my house. This metal rooster I got from Hobby Lobby. When it was on sale in the spring, I'll need a clothespin. I may or may not paint that. And I need some chenille stems and my bow maker so I can make a bow. I also need my wire cutters, some sandpaper, my heavy duty stapler and some quarter inch staples, my hot glue gun and some paint sticks. And that's all the items we need for this project. I'm going to be taking out the glass and I'll just dispose of it. And then I'll also come back and I'll remove the glazing points because I no longer will need these. I just use my wire cutters, but you're probably supposed to use some kind of plier. And now I'll take my white chalk paint and I'm going to give my frame a good base coat. It will just help the red cover so much better. First, I'm going to go all around my frame and get all of the outside. I love the fact that this chalk paint takes hardly any time to dry when you use a light coat. Guys, don't forget we're having a giveaway over on Facebook in our group called Crafting Cousins Crafty Corner. Come and join us over there. We have a lot of sweet members who share their projects on a weekly basis. We would love to see your projects as well. As soon as I get all the edges here, I'm going to turn it over and paint all the crevices that will show from the outside. I jokingly call this painting in the ditch. And now we're going to start with the red paint. I'm just going back and doing the same thing I did with the white. The coverage of this red paint is just amazing. I have been so pleased with how it covers your entire object and you rarely need a second coat. I think painting can be so relaxing. I just get impatient watching it dry. And so I actually did come in with my blow dryer and I set it so it would go even faster. And now I'm taking my chicken wire and I'm laying it out carefully. You want to be extra careful because it will cut you. The last time I used it, I got several cuts. But I'm laying it out using my heavy duty stapler and pulling it as tight as I can. It takes a little time, but I love the looks of it. And now I'm using my wire cutters and carefully cutting away the excess. I try to cut it as close to a knot as I can, if that makes any sense. So that it will be less sticking out. You need a lot of staples for this project. but it's still a fun project to do. And now I want to cover up those wire edges. I'm just using some paint sticks. Four of them worked out quite well, and that will cover up all the rough edges. And it will keep it from scratching my pantry door where this is going to be hanging. You could use popsicle sticks for this. And now I'm using that metal rooster. I had a little cable tie at the top of the rooster because I've used it on a different project. 
and I used some chenille stems and twisted it into the wire on the back as well as that cable tie and I'm just pulling it through to the nearest hole that will be hidden and twisting it in. And it's always good to use a dab of hot glue to set it in place. And then cut off the excess. I love to add bows to my projects, especially when I use my easy bow to tie them. I'm going to be making a seven inch bow and I'm just twisting four loops of each ribbon. When I come in with the second ribbon, I will make each loop just a little shorter than the first ribbon. I just take a chenille stem and twist it around my bow and that's how I'm also going to attach it into my frame. Now let's dovetail those ends. And now I'll just attach my bow to that upper right hand corner. I'm just attaching it to the wire and pulling it through the back, twisting it around, securing it with some glue, and cut off the excess. I'll just use a clothespin to attach my shopping list to my frame that sits outside my pantry door. I need a way to hang my frame, so I'm going to use two eye hooks at the top, and I'll just take some twine and pull it through my loops and tie it in a knot. This is the perfect way to hang it on my door. And there it is. I love how this project turned out. It is a welcome addition to our family kitchen. At number seven are a pair of angel wings that were requested by one of our subscribers. Hey y'all, it's Trish. Kay and I received a message from one of our subscribers asking us if we would do a set of angel wings. She explained that she had lost her husband and that the wings had taken on a special meaning for her, so of course we wanted to give it a shot. The first thing I did was take a piece of paper and sketch out a wing. Once I had it where I liked it, I cut it out and then traced that onto a piece of foam board. I flipped it over and traced it in mirror image so that I would have a set. Now I'm just going to take my Zacto knife and go around each wing and cut them out. I did have to go and change my blade. If you try cutting foam board with a dull blade, it catches and tears, but once I got a fresh blade, it did perfectly. I took a piece of sandpaper and just went around on and smoothed out any rough edges. I knew that I wanted to use crab sticks to make my wings so that they would look like a wood sculpture. Kay suggested that I use the shingles that you use whenever you're making a dollhouse. They sell those at Hobby Lobby in a big bag. And in the end, I decided not to because they're about $8 a bag. But I will tell you that after cutting all these little crab sticks, I wish I had. So if you're going to be making one of these, I can tell you that it's worth the little bit extra to go ahead and buy those shingles that are pre-cut. Now I just take my pieces, I use both ends of the craft stick and I start layering them onto my wing. As you go up, it makes a gap in between the wings and the foam board. So in the beginning, I would just take the little pieces from the middle of the stick and kind of stick them down under there to fill that gap. But then the gap got to be too big. So I started taking scrap pieces of the foam board and gluing it on just to build that up. Now, this is going to look like a mess on this first wing, but I promise you stick around. I learned my lesson and I fixed it on the second wing. I just used a combination of the craft sticks and the foam board and just kept building it up until I had my craft sticks laying down and I honestly thought this looked like feathers laying on top of each other. Once I had my long feathers done, 
I wanted to be able to do something that would give me texture at the top that reminds you of those small feathers that angel wings have at the top. So I took some pine cones and I broke off the pieces and I used the little pointy piece as my texture. I just break them off and I kept gluing them on top of each other. Now these are sticky, so watch your fingers. And I also baked my pine cones in the oven to kill any little bugs that was in it, but I don't think I left them in there quite long enough because there was still a couple of ants that came out of the pine cones. So make sure you bake them for at least, I'd say 10 minutes. As I filled up that area, I really love the texture that the pine cone was giving me at the top of my wing. Here you see that I got a clue and I cut out some extra wings out of the foam board that I had left over. Now I can put down my little wooden pieces and then when I get to the point where I need to build it up, I can just mark the foam, cut it and glue it down and I don't have to deal with all those little pieces. It does take two of the craft sticks to equal the same width of the foam. So I did still use the little pieces that I was breaking off from the middle of the craft stick up under the first layer. And then after the second layer, I would put down another piece of foam board and then I would use the craft sticks and I kept going in that order until I had it built up the way I needed it to be. Once I got my wings finished, I needed to do something with those sides because you could see the mess that I had made building up the wing. So I took some of the caulk mastic that I got from the Dollar Tree and I would just squeeze it on and then use my finger to run it around the side. And I did leave it textured because I really liked how that looked. Now I'm just going to take my lighter and I ran it over the top of it really quick to melt those little glue strings that you get when you use hot glue. After all of that was finished, I took some white chalk paint and I went over both wings, painting them real well. I made sure that I got in the little cracks of the wings. And then at the top, I took the brush and kind of spounced it on so that I got in between all the little nooks and crannies that my pine cone made. The caulk is actually white, but it was a different color white than what I was using in the chalk paint. So I actually went around that too and gave it a good coat so that it would all match. I did want to distress this a little bit. I didn't want to leave it a solid white. So I went to my old go-to and I took an old eyeshadow palette and a stencil brush and started brushing it on. And I was getting a slight bit of distressing on it, but not as much as I wanted. So I ended up taking one of the furniture repair markers and I would rub it against my brush and then rub it onto the wings. And between it and the eyeshadow, I got exactly the look that I was wanting. I have this palette board that I picked up from Goodwill Outlet that I'm going to use to mount my wings on. I got as much of the plastic off the back as I could and I cut off the twine and then I just glued my wings down to the front of the palette board with my hot glue. I wanted to distress my board a little bit too, so I took my white Waverly chalk paint and my stenciling brush and just did a little dry brush effect over it to highlight some of the boards. I want to make a shabby chic flower to go in the middle of my wings. So I took my burlap and pulled the string out to give me a cutting line and then I took some lace I had on hand and cut it to the same width as my burlap. I wrapped the pieces around my hand just to give it a loop. You can see it over in the left hand side. I'm sorry that I was out of camera range, but once I got my loop, I just kind of gathered it up in the middle and put a rubber band around it. And then I take my scissors and I cut those ends to open it up. And then once I get that done, I take the scissors and just start whacking at it. There's no rhyme or reason. I just kind of cut at it to give it that shabby look. And the more you cut, it's going to open up like a flower. And then I just kept pulling at it and trimming it to kind of round it up until it looks somewhat like a flower. Now I'm going to do my burlap the same way. You can see that I'm wrapping the rubber band around the center of it. And then I take my scissors and cut open the ends. And then I just start cutting on it. 
Burlap does this cool thing when you cut on it. It actually starts falling apart and I really like that. So you can see that I pulled on it with my fingers and big chunks of it fell out and it really started looking rough and had that shabby look that I was wanting. Once I had them both ready, I just stacked them on top of each other and fluffed it a little more and then I used my hot glue to glue them together. I took one of these, it's pearl with like some stones around it. It looks like a little flower. I get them from the wedding section at Hobby Lobby and I glued it into the middle of our flower just to give it a little bit of bling. I put it on my board and kind of fluffed it around just to get the look that I was looking for. And then I took some hot glue and attached it to my wings. And there's our set of angel wings. I am really happy with how these turned out. I'm not sure the camera does them justice, but when you are looking at them in person, they really look like a set of sculptured wings and I absolutely love them. I hope our subscriber does too. Number six is a farmhouse pumpkin wreath that I made. I'm going to be making a farmhouse pumpkin wreath. I'll use this wreath form from the Dollar Tree some fabric, some burlap ribbon, some E6000 and hot glue, and now I'm just cutting some strips of fabric, the width to go across one section of the bars on the wreath. I'll use some E6000 and then also some hot glue to get it set right away. I just start applying my strips and pulling them to the side, keeping it as straight and taut as possible. I just use hot glue when I need to get a fast hold, but ultimately it will be the E6000 that keeps it together. And I just work my way across the middle of the pumpkin. I will be using this procedure for three sections of my pumpkin. I will skip every other section. And I'll use a different fabric and technique for the second fabric. Now I just get it as nice and tight as I can following the shape of the wreath. I started in the middle and went down one side, and then I went back to the middle and down the other side. And then I came around to the back and trimmed off the excess. And that's how it looks. And now I'm going to the next section. Like I said, I skipped one. And I'm going to do the same thing, only I got a little smarter this time and used my clips from the Dollar Tree to help hold it so I could do a longer section at a time. Again, starting in the middle, work to the edge, back to the middle, and to the next edge. And I did this same procedure for another section as well. And now I'm taking off the clips from the third section, trim it up, and it's coming together quite well. For the inside sections, I'm going to be using this burlap ribbon. I'll just apply hot glue because it's going to be sticking to the fabric. If you notice, I'm wearing those finger protectors that I got at the Dollar Tree and they really did help. Because the burlap fabric is so porous, the glue will come right through. So be careful and don't get burned.
and I just work my way across. I will do that section to the next side of the middle the same way. And trim it up. Little glue at the end. And then I'm going to trim the inside so I have a nice margin for gluing the next section in. Because I do want to make sure I glue the burlap ribbon to the orange and white fabric. Have you tried this wreath form from the Dollar Tree before? We would love to see your pictures on our group called Crafting Cousins Crafty Corner. And now I have the two middle sections in, and I'm going to start one of the outside sections. I just make sure it's wide enough and work my way around the outside rim, gluing as I go, pushing it down into the glue and making sure it's holding. And then I'll fold it around the outside edge, keeping it nice and tight. And then I fold it back to the inside and glue that inside piece there. And I will do the other outside the exact same way, so I didn't see any reason to film that. And now I'm just covering those raw edges of the wreath form. There it is. Well, I couldn't leave it alone because I didn't like the black showing. So I'm going to take some jute rope that I got at Hobby Lobby with a coupon and I'm going to cover the wreath form all the way around. And here I am at the end, finishing up, and I'm just going to take the jute and go around the stem of my pumpkin as well. And well, I decided it needed a little more finishing. So I'm going to actually outline all of the orange sections of my pumpkin with the jute rope as well. I just glue it sort of to the outside and it just gives a nice finished edge. It did take quite a bit of time and a lot of patience. But I really do like the final look. There it is. So now I'm just taking some florals that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm kind of making a swag to go on the pumpkin. I just took these cattail looking ones and made them the base of my swag. And then I just wire in three of my sunflowers. And then I decided to put in a few pomegranates I love the florals at Dollar Tree this fall. And then I'll just wire it into my pumpkin. And now I'm taking a chenille stem. I'm going to twist it into the back and this will be how I hang my pumpkin on my door. And there it is. I love my farmhouse pumpkin. I can't wait to start decorating my side porch where my friends and family come in. At number five, we took some Dollar Tree items and made our own tobacco basket. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use Dollar Tree placemats to make a tobacco basket. I have wanted one of these for so long, but I just could not convince myself to pay the price. This is one project that has been on my mind for a while. 
I couldn't figure out what I could use in place of the oak strips. I was in Dollar Tree yesterday and saw these placemats and an idea was born. I wanted three quarter inch strips, so I took my ruler, marked my placemat, and drew my cut lines. Then I grabbed my scissors and started cutting. I cut up three placemats, but I only ended up using two and maybe a fourth of the third one. These cut very easily with just my cheap scissors. I wanted to make my vinyl look like wood. I have watched lots of creators paint a faux wood finish on different surfaces, so I decided to just go for it. I didn't have any brown chalk paint and I felt like acrylic wouldn't stick well on its own. I took some of my Waverly Ivory chalk paint and mixed it with the burnt umber acrylic paint I had on hand. Y'all, I'm not going to lie, this project just about did me in. The paint looked very flat and scratched easily. I did have the thought that I should have probably used spray paint for the base, but I didn't have any on hand and didn't want to go all the way into town to get some, so I just hoped for the best and kept going. I wasn't feeling how it looked, so I decided to walk away and come back in the morning. I literally dreamed about this project all night. When I came back to the project, I knew I needed to give the paint some depth. I took my black chalk paint and a stencil brush and lightly dry brushed a little over each strip. Then I came back in with my Valspar antiquing wax and that is when this project started to turn around. I used the stencil brush and applied the wax pretty heavily over each strip. The stiff brussels left streaks that resembled a wood grain and the wax softened the black paint. This literally started to look like wood strips. I don't think the camera does this justice. I was so excited. I knew I wanted my basket to be square. I started laying out my strips side by side and then I removed every other one so that I would have equal spacing. I used a piece of tape across the top to keep my strips from moving while I was weaving the cross strips in. Do you like to paper craft? Have you tried making journals? Our sweet friend and craft group member Luann has a channel called The Coastal Crafter that is all about paper crafting. I would love it if you would go over and check her out. She does such beautiful work and I could listen to her talk all day long. She is trying so hard to get to 100 subscribers and she is doing a giveaway. I would love it if we could help her surpass her goal. I will leave a link to her channel in the description box below. Go check her out and let her know we sent you. Once I've got all of my strips woven together, I used a little hot glue on the end pieces to hold everything together and then remove my tape. It did pull the paint up in a couple of places, but I just went back and touched those up easily. I flipped the piece over and added more hot glue at each end. Now I'm going to make the diamond pattern in the center of my basket. I took four of my strips and laid them out to see where they would cross. Once I had my pattern, I just tacked down the strips with some hot glue. At this point, I'm starting to see my basket come to life. Now I just trim off the excess. To make the bands that go around the top of the basket and pull the sides up, I took five of my strips and glued them end to end for each band. I used some clear Gorilla Glue for the permanent hold and some hot glue for the fast hold. I started by gluing one of my bands to the ends of my woven piece. When you get to the corner, it gets tricky. I couldn't get the corner pieces to stay in place and pull in enough to give me a little depth to my basket. I played with it a bit to make it round off and I was able to clamp it and it worked much better. 
Don't worry that your ends stick up past your band. We can trim those off at the end. It is much better for them to be too long than to not be long enough. I just kept working my way around my basket, gluing and clamping. I didn't have to leave the clamps on very long. The hot glue set up pretty quickly. Somewhere around the back side of my basket, I realized that if I bent the vinyl over and pressed, the ends would stand up and it made it much easier to attach the band. You see here that I went back around and bent all of my ends up so that they stood straight up. Now we just glue our second band around the inside of the basket. This gives the edges extra support so that they stand up better and it gives the inside a more finished appearance. When everything was set, I took off the clamps and then trimmed the strips down to the top of the band. Of course you could see the white vinyl where I had cut, so I took my black permanent marker and went around the edges. This covered everything and it really finished off my basket. I also touched up any scratches that had occurred while I was putting it together. I want to decorate my basket, so I take a little sign I got from Hobby Lobby and use it as a base. I picked up several of the beautiful calendars that they have at the Dollar Tree right now and will use one of the small pictures on the back for my sign. I got this little sign from the Hobby Lobby after Easter when they were 90% off. I'm always picking up signs from there when the seasons change. It doesn't matter what they say because I always redo them. I just saw that the spring line has been marked down to 75% off and they have a lot of signs left. I painted the inside of my sign with my ivory chalk paint. I wanted to make sure I covered the wording so that it would not show through my picture. I got a little paint on the frame, but I just touched it up with my furniture repair marker that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now I just use my Mod Podge to attach the picture, and once it's dry, I use my old eyeshadow to soften the edges and give it a slight distressed look. I grabbed some of the gorgeous sunflowers that I got from the Dollar Tree and picked out a few to use on my basket. I also took some leaves and mini mums that I had left over from other projects. I glued a couple of the leaves to the sunflowers to give them a little more dimension. Then I just started playing around with them to see how I wanted them to lay. Once I had them arranged the way I liked, I just used some hot glue and tacked everything down. I placed my sign at the top of my arrangement and glued it down with a little hot glue. And there's my tobacco basket. For something that just about did me in, I absolutely love how it turned out. Please give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help us so much. If you like crafting, we'd love to see pics. Come on over to Facebook and join our group, Crafting Cousins Crafty Corner. We will leave a link down in the description box below. And number four is the pink ornament painting that I did with a sign from the Dollar Tree. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Today's challenge is to create a sign from the Dollar Tree signs and also to use something pink. Well, I'm going to combine them in both by using this Let It Snow snowman sign from the Dollar Tree. I found this sign on Pinterest and I want to try and recreate it on my own. So I printed it off as best I could on my computer from a screenshot. I used two sheets of paper and just spliced it there in the middle because the sign was fairly long. I'm going to use some chalk paint in white and plaster and fern and moss. And I will also be using some black chalk paint and this ballet slipper pink. And I will need a few tools. I'm going to use some paint brushes, a pencil, and some tracing paper as well. 
The first thing I'm going to do is start deconstructing this sign. I'm going to take off the let it snow part. We can always use that on another project. And then I'm going to draw a line on the back about two and a half inches down. I found that my pattern needed some of the length taken off. And then I just score it with this box cutter several times. And then I discover I need to go ahead and take off the backing on the front. So I just go in and remove all of that paper that's on the front. I'm just using my Cricut tools and it takes just a few minutes, but it's not hard at all. And finally, I go back and score it again and it just comes right off. And now I'm going to take my Waverly white chalk paint and I'm going to give the sign a basic coat using my chippy brush and just putting it on quickly. And now let's come in with our plaster chalk paint and give the board a good coating using short, even brush strokes. I want this part to look as finished as possible. And I did end up only having to put one coat of plaster. It turned out great, actually. The first thing I'm going to do is take some of this painter's tape and I'm going to lay down my pattern here if you will, and I'm going to tape it along this one edge. And then I'm going to put in my carbon paper and go around my design and trace it with my pencil. I just give a rough outline of the sketch. Guys, I am by no means an artist, that's why I'm doing the old paint by number. I just make sure that the tracing papers work in there and then come back and quickly fill it in. I did speed it up some for the video, but I went fairly quickly and just quickly sketched it in. And for the ornament at the bottom, it wasn't exactly centered the way my drawing was, so I took it off, re-centered it, and come in and trace the lines and the top of my ornament. I start tracing in the actual ornament, but then I decide that's too much trouble. Let's just cut the thing out and draw around it. So that's what I did. And now I'm using my permanent marker in black and I'm going to just outline quickly all of these branches. I hate to come in with dark paint on a white background all at one time, so it helps me to go in and draw in the black first. And then I trace out the cap of my ornament. I'm mixing some white chalk paint into this black chalk paint. And guys, I know most paintings are in acrylic. I just wanted to do it this way. And I'm coming in with a really tiny brush. And this color came out kind of a charcoal gray, although it looks very black on camera. But I'm just roughly filling in my branches. Branches are rough, so you don't have to be too precise when you're drawing it in. And then I decide I'll go ahead and paint that pink on my ornament while the top part is drying. And at first, I just layer in the paint color. And now I'm going back with some watered down Waverly white chalk paint. And I'm applying it to the top of that charcoal gray and smudging it with my fingers and giving it more dimension. I really did let the black dry, but it still lifts up enough and it just gives this nice effect, almost like snow, but not quite. But we don't want our branches to be one dimensional and just one color. So I just keep shading and rubbing in the color. If I make a mistake, well, I just cover it back up with some plaster. And then I put a little shading on our ornament at the bottom, wipe some of it off, add some more in, I just keep working with it till I get it like I want it. 
and go back and finish those branches at the top that I didn't. Add a little more to the side. Kind of like a Bob Ross painting. And now I'm taking the color fern and putting it in first. I'm using a chisel, chiseled brush and I'm going to go in and just make needles for my branches. I just keep playing with it and I eventually get it the way I want it. Like I said, if you make a mistake, just paint over it and start again. This is the darker of the two greens that I had. And then I'm going to come in with some silver that I found in my stash and I'm going to cover in the little part on top of the ornament with this silver paint. And now I'm going in with my moss green and I'm just kind of going in between where I've already painted in fern. There is no rhyme or reason. Again, I'm using a chiseled brush and I'm just kind of spouncing it on. And that's kind of all there is to this project. But I love how it turned out. I'm going to place it in my studio and enjoy it through the holidays. Merry Christmas, y'all. At number three, we took two wire baskets from the Dollar Tree and made a dress form that we turned into a tree. Hey, y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use two of these white mesh baskets I got from the Dollar Tree, some zip ties that I got from Harbor Freight, but you can get these at the Dollar Tree as well, some wire cutters, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. We are going to make a dress form. So the first thing I did was take one of my little mesh baskets and my wire cutters and I just clipped it right along the edge there at the top where that wire runs around it. I clipped pretty good piece, um, maybe a third of the way around the basket. You want to make sure that you can bend that wire down in the back. So once I got it clipped enough that I could pull it down, I took the mesh and wrapped it around. And this is really easy to do. Once you get it down, you just wrap the mesh around and it holds it really well. Then I went to the front and in the center, I just started pushing it down until I bent it into a V. As it bends down, it pushes out the front and this makes it like a bust. Now we're going to attach it to the bottom basket. I put a little bit of hot glue on it and then I just stacked it on top. Once my hot glue set, I took some of my zip ties and I feed them through one and back down through the other and then tie them off. This secures my basket so they're not going to come apart. I put about three zip ties inside of it and then I just used my wire cutters and clipped off the ends. And there's our dress form. Now I want to dress it up. So I'm going to use this garland that I took off of my tomato cage trees, some of this ribbon that I got from Dollar General, a piece of garland that I had left over from some other projects. This came from the Dollar Tree. Some of these picks that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using the silver and the white. and some of these small silver pine cones that I also got from the Dollar Tree. So there was three pieces of this garland that were attached together. So I just took off one of them. I knew that's all I was gonna need. And I took that wire at the end and I just kind of wrapped it around the bottom of my basket. You don't want to start on the bottom because you want to make sure that the plug is down there so that you can plug it up. Now I'm going to take some of my zip ties and I'm going to attach this all the way around the bottom. Now I only use the zip ties around the bottom and this was so that it didn't slide off the bottom once I picked it up. You only need a few of them and it attaches really well. 
as I was wrapping my garland, I made sure that I kept pushing those limbs down. You don't want them to stick up. At the end, we want everything to be kind of facing down. Once I got that first row secured, then I literally just started wrapping it around the form. I did not worry about the holes because as I go, I keep pushing it down, pushing it down, and it fills in those holes naturally on its own. And I just kept wrapping until I get up to the waist. And this was a nine foot garland and it actually worked out perfectly. This one also has lights in it, but it's because I wrapped those lights around that garland when I made those tomato cage trees. And so I just left them in there when I took it off because it's gonna work perfectly to light up my dress. Now I'm gonna take that little piece of garland that I had left from another project and I'm going to glue it onto the top of my dress. This hot glue works out perfectly on this and this piece of garland ended up being the perfect length for this. I just put a little bit of hot glue around that top wire and then I stick my garland down on top of it and form that V shape. Once I got that glued down, I took a couple of the leaves off of this pick that I got from the Dollar Tree and I glued two of them down. I started in the V part and glued up. I think these leaves are so beautiful and they were the perfect touch for the top of my dress. Once I got those attached, I took three of these little shimmery white balls that I got on a pick from the Dollar Tree. I trimmed those down and I glued them right there in the center to cover up where those two leaves meet up. Now I'm going to take this little silvery limb thing. I got this from Ollie's and it is so pretty. I just cut off little pieces of it and I went all around the dress and I just glued them in at varying heights. I wanted to make sure that it gave interest all the way around. I did end up using this whole branch, but I thought it was beautiful once everything got put together. Now I'm going to take these little silver pine cones that come on this wire from the Dollar Tree and I cut them off the wire. Then I stuck them around on the skirt to get my placing and then I went back and used a little bit of hot glue to glue them down. Now I'm going to take this ribbon that I got from Dollar General and I wrap a piece around the waist, figure out how long I need it, trim it off and glue it down. This ribbon is so pretty. It's an iridescent white color with some beautiful silver snowflakes on it. Then I took another piece of the ribbon, figured out how big I wanted my bow to be, and I trimmed off my ribbon. Now to make this bow, this is so simple. I just lap those ends over each other, pinch it up in the center, and use a zip tie to tighten it up. Then I just trim off my zip tie, and I dovetail my ends. Now we're going to glue it right on top there where that ribbon met. And there's our dress form tree. This piece takes my breath away. The photos do not do it justice. It is so beautiful with all the sparkly stuff. And this could actually stay out all winter. It's not just a Christmas tree. I've wanted one of these pieces for a long time and I really love how this one turned out. And number two is a Kirkland's dupe where I made a cute blessing sign. For this look for less, we're going to be recreating this sign from Kirkland's that's regular $59.99 on sale for $44.99. We're going to need some wood. I'm using this piece of Luan. It's about a quarter of an inch thick. You can get it at any hardware store. I happen to have some already in my garage. I'm cutting the piece at 20 by 24, which was the size of the original piece of art. I bought some 1 by 2 lumber at Lowe's and I had them cut it for me. I needed two 24 inch pieces and two 18 and 3 quarter inch pieces. They're a little rough, so I need to sand them before I paint them. 
I'm going to use this burlap bandana. It will be part of our background. It comes to a size of about 24 by 24, which is just perfect for this project. I have some florals that I got at the Dollar Tree, some red berries to go on the wreath, some red chalk paint from Hobby Lobby, I have some pine cones that I found in my stash. I need some black HTV vinyl that I'm going to use to make our word at the bottom of our sign. I'll just use my silhouette to cut that out. And then I need some greenery to make the wreath to go on the board. This is just some leftovers from last year. And finally, I need, of course, a paintbrush. I have a hot glue gun and the special Sure Bonder wood glue sticks. And now it's time to paint. I'm using that red chalk paint that I got at Hobby Lobby. It covered so well, I was shocked that I only needed one coat. I first covered one side and one edge of my boards. And then I allowed them to dry before I come back and do the back side of each of the boards. One side of my board is really flat and that's what I use to attach it to my background. And I don't paint that side, but I did paint all of the ends. Just in case there are any gaps, I didn't want the raw wood to show. I wanted it to be a nice finished frame. Do you use a lot of chalk paint in your crafting? The next thing I want to do is attach the burlap to the background of our frame. I'm going to be using some Mod Podge. I'm going to use a very generous coat and spread it out, doing a small section at a time. I finally just poured it out onto the frame. You need to move pretty quickly but the Mod Podge really attached it very well. Make sure you smooth out all of those air pockets. And don't worry about the little imperfections you see. The Mod Podge will dry clear. And now I'm going to just trim off the excess because my board was 20 by 24 and my cloth was 24 by 24. And now I want to attach the wood sides. I'm going to be using a combination of regular wood glue and hot wood glue sticks. This is the first time I have used those and they actually worked pretty well. I'm going to put on the two long sides first and then I will put on the top piece. I'm going to hold off on that bottom piece so that I could put on the word believe. That will give me some room to get in with my iron. And now I'm playing with that greenery and I want to turn it into a wreath. I'm going to fluff it out real nicely. I just cut off about a 31 inch piece and, and I just wired it together at the ends, just twisting it upon itself. And now I need my berries put in. I cut them with my wire cutters, and then I just twisted them inside my wreath. I'll come back later and glue them in with a little hot glue. And now I have my pine cones. I'm going to take some floral wire and twist it around the ends of all three of them. And now I'll just wire them into my wreath. The original picture had three pine cones, so that's what I chose as well. And now I'm just gluing everything down with a little hot glue, just to make extra sure that it is secure in the wreath. And now I'm going to place down my iron-on, which says Believe. I cut that out on my Cameo Silhouette, and then I'm using my iron to carefully iron it onto the burlap. I have a little screw that I placed at the top and I'm using that to wire on my wreath. 
that will keep it nice and secure when I hang it on the wall. And now I'm going to attach the last piece of wood that goes at the bottom. I'm using again wood glue and hot wood glue sticks. And that pretty much completes our project. But I do want to distress it a bit because the one in the original was distressed. So I'm just using some fine sandpaper and I'll just go around my frame and highlight some areas. And there it is. I love how this turned out. I can't believe I have less than $9 in this entire project. And now we're back to number one. Earlier we showed you how we made our ladder. Now we're gonna show you how we change out the decorations for the different seasons. I'll be putting the link down in the description box for the videos on how we made the decorations. And for number one, we are back to the ladder. I showed you a little earlier how I made it and how I decorated it for the 4th of July. And we told you that we would come back and show you the other ways that we've decorated it for other seasons. Now here I'm decorating it for the fall. I picked up this leaf garland from the Dollar General that I wrapped around it. And then I used some pics and some signs from the Dollar Tree and the Dollar General and made the decorations to go on it. I will put a card up at the top so that you can go to the video and see how I made each piece for it. I really loved how this came together. I've actually had a lot of fun decorating this for the different seasons. And there it is for Christmas. For Christmas, I changed out my garland with one that had some poinsettias on it. I thought this was perfect for the season. And then I used some ornaments and some signs that I made to decorate the rest of it. There are so many possibilities for decorating this ladder and I've had so much fun with it. I'm looking forward to the new year when I can make some new pieces for it as well. If you do make one, we would love to see pictures of yours. We have a craft group over on Facebook called Crafting Cousins Crafty Corner, and everyone shows off their creations over there. We've had a couple of people who have made this ladder, and I have just loved seeing what they do with it. Thank you all for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed our top 20 of 2020. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye y'all!